Well, it's about time, eh? This is something that you use on wood, of course. Uh, Howard Restore finish, or I just call it Howard's Restore. I use the ebony brown on Bakelite, too. And it doesn't do much except to clean it up and give it a smoother appearance, which is a good thing. I use a small felt rag to, uh, to apply it. Um, I like the way felt works with Howard Restore. It doesn't soak up a bunch of it. Um, I wind up wasting less of the material and it applies it in a nice smooth way. And I just throw them away when I'm done. My wife gets them for me. So you just get some Restore on the rag and you just spread it on the Bakelite. Seems kind of weird, I know, but it, it cleans it and it will give it will darken it and make it shine a little bit. It kind of makes it pop, actually. Now, Howard's Restore is not cheap, but uh, it's one of those products that I, I would never be without. Okay. Now, let it dry just a little bit, not a lot. You don't want it to go all the way dry. And you just buff it off of there. And what it does is it gives it a smooth, cared for appearance. It doesn't really shine it much, it doesn't really do much of any of that. But it makes it looks like, look like it was taken care of. Without removing the age. So you can see there is a difference between the, the part where I put the Restore and the part where I did not put the Restore. It does definitely freshen up the appearance a bit. That's what I'm trying to do. That's all I want to do here. I'm not really going to make this a new cabinet. And I wouldn't want to. It's an old cabinet and you remove its charm if you make it new. You just kind of work it a little bit. You don't have to work it hard, just go back and forth over it a bit. And that enhances the cleaning action of it. Howard, Howard Restore will not leave a nasty white um, residue or anything like that. So you can see definitely, definitely a difference between the two sides. And this is a side that I polished right here from here this way. And yet it still looks dingy compared to this. So this is what you want to do. Now this will dry some and it will it will not it will lose some of that gloss, but it will still remain looking better than what you did what you you know those areas you didn't do. And it's so easy to do. If you're doing this indoors like I am, you want to ventilate, right? So you don't blow yourself up because this stuff is flammable. I mean, this summer we're running an air conditioner rather than the furnace, but still not a smart thing. I would say the best part about this is the cleaning effect of it. So you don't have to do a separate cleaning. And this does a better job of cleaning than 409 or any other crap on Bakelite. Work this just a little bit. See it? You know, the overall appearance is just really made nice by this stuff. It won't make it perfect. But perfection is not what you want because this is old. You want it to look old. But it will not hurt the material at all. Now, I want to warn you guys. If this were plastic, okay, and sometimes it's hard to tell. If this were plastic, you wouldn't want to be doing this. 
because it would definitely damage plastic. And some people think that Bakelite is an early form of plastic. It's really not. Uh, I mean, not in the sense uh, that plastic is petroleum-based thermal set material. Bakelite is a thermal set material, but I don't believe it has the same chemical formulation as plastic does. Okay, that looks real nice, guys. Okay, so it's definitely not perfect, but it has a much nicer look to it than what it did before. Okay, let me do the rest of the cabinet. Before I attempt to clean this uh, cabinet, the outside of this cabinet on this record player, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, remove the front trim. Uh, I, I think that the risk of damaging, you know, getting stuff on the cloth and so forth is, is not worth leaving it in there. It's much better to take it out. It's real easy anyway. You just remove these four nuts. There we go. Piece of cake. We'll set that aside and look at it in a minute. Let me get these, uh, this hardware put away. Let's take a look at this, uh, this assembly. It's really quite pretty. I keep, I've gone back and forth about whether or not I should try to paint this, but the truth is the risk of messing it up is too great. It's really not worth it. I mean, you've got to get dark down in these this lettering. You've got to, to paint it without the pitting standing out and looking bad, and you've got to do it where it isn't too glossy. So most of this metallic paint that you find these days is really too glossy. I have some stainless steel paint. If it were a silver color, I wouldn't be afraid to paint it. But this, this gold or this brass color, it's not worth painting it and taking a chance that I'll, that I'll make it look fake. Cardboard lifts out. So first thing, I'll get that out. It's the speaker grill. Okay. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to mess with it any. You, you see a little bit of dark staining around it. That's normal. I should leave it be. There, that's another thing that I could mess up. These admirals had a light colored speaker cloth. If I were to try and spray that with toner and darken it up and make it look more even, it would look odd in this record changer. So it looks good the way it is. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to remove this, this dial glass. Okay, the gasket material is still soft, so I'm not worried about cracking that. It might be, it might be hard on the ends. But I've got replacement material if I need to. Let me set the cabinet itself aside. We'll deal with that in a few minutes. I'm doing all of this so that I can clean the cabinet with abandon and not worry about damaging any of this stuff. But since I got this out, I might as well do this right too. Take it apart. And uh, since I'm not going to paint this, this pretty trim, what I can do is wash it. And uh, maybe even apply a coat of wax to it to make it look a little better. Okay, there we go, nice and easy. The rubber will be stuck, so you want to, you don't go prying on it. This is glass, okay? So don't go prying on stuff. Never ever pry on a dial glass, because you will break it. Okay, there we go, real pretty. So I'll clean this up real gently. All the printing is on this side, so I can wipe this with water, and very, very, very gently with a lightly damp cloth, I can clean this up, which is what I'll do. I'll go ahead and leave the put those parts in a baggie and I'm going to put this somewhere safe. When we get to this guy here now, now it's okay for me to wash this. Okay, that about wraps it up for for uh, cleaning up the cabinet. Got the inside and the outside. And I think it's looking pretty good. So, uh, we'll get to work on her now, putting it back together. What do you say we get ready to put the dial glass back in this in this trim? So let's go ahead and lay the trim out there. Get the pieces out. Put the dial glass. Now I don't want to I don't want to put a dirty dial glass back in this thing. So I'm going to do it right and uh, clean this dial glass up. I mentioned earlier that the paint is actually on this side. Okay, so. 
and it's a multicolor paint. Really nice. Admiral always did a nice job, and they always had a similar dial. I've got a full-size TV console that has a dial that looks a lot like this. So you just, this is moistened with a little just plain water. And uh, you want to make sure you're working on a nice, flat, even surface because you are pushing down on it just a little bit. You don't want to crack this glass because that will suck. Uh, it's probably available reproduction, but why would you want to? So you can really snazz up a radio by doing little stuff like this without completely restoring everything. Uh, sometimes one can over restore a radio. I see that a lot and when I go to like you know where collectors are and stuff. People will have finished a radio to the point where it doesn't look real. Or they'll paint things and it looks nice I guess. You know kind of like restoring an old Schwinn bicycle though. I kind of like an old Schwinn bicycle to look like an old Schwinn bicycle because that's how I remember them. Well the same with an old radio. It needs to have some element of age on it, otherwise it's just a new radio wrapped into wrapped around an old radio and it doesn't look real. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the back side has to be done with a little more care because I don't know if this paint is water soluble or not. So I take a really lightly damp piece and I just touch, I mean just touch it. And I do a tiny bit at a time. And you'd be surprised how much crud is on the back side of these because they're usually facing the circuit, which is sort of emitting a lot of crud as it operates. Yeah, there's definitely a difference after I wipe it real gently. I'd suspect that if this is water soluble paint, it's not highly soluble or whatever. It doesn't seem to be. None of it's coming off on the towel. This dirt's coming off. And dirt is coming off. You don't really have to get too excited about cleaning on this gold area because you can't see through it. So really you want to focus just on the dial part. Real nice. Yeah, that looks real good. And that's all there is to it, guys. Don't do more than that. Okay? Don't risk breaking this glass. That looks really nice. And that's all that it needs. If you look back at the pictures of this radio when I started, this thing is a hundred times better than it was. Let's put this piece of gasket material on. I would love to be able to find gasket material this size. They sell a gasket material at radio days. and You use it on Zenith dials and dial glass and stuff like that, but it's too big. And I don't know why they won't get it the right size or make it the right size, whatever it takes. I mean, there's lots of examples out there of what it's supposed to be. Now, I haven't gone on a, a, a search yet for this material, but eventually I will because I don't like paying the price that you have to pay when you buy it online too. I'd rather buy it in bulk and not have to pay that kind of exorbitant price. It's way, way expensive. And I live in a big enough city that I ought to be able to find this kind of channel. I just haven't chased it yet. And I, I will some, pro, sometime soon probably because I have some Zeniths coming up and I'm getting tired of paying for that expensive stuff. All right, there you go. Lay out the hardware. Okay. Now, very, very gently set this down. I suspect that there was a piece on the top, but it's gone. So you want to kind of center it. Do the best you can. Before I tighten it, I will center it the rest of the way. <clears throat> There's a little clip. Okay, and that little clip has kind of got a little lip on it like that. And that hangs over to the outside. On the outside of the screw post helps align it I think or makes it stronger I'm not sure okay and then you take your screw and uh, go ahead and get it into the hole there nothing to it 
I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I want to make sure that glass is aligned. Now let's do the other side. You see the, the whole point of that rubber gasket is to help cushion because you're, you're manipulating things. You're putting this clip on and you're, you're moving the glass around. It'll cushion things so you don't crack the glass. This glass really, gla radial dial glass is fragile. It cracks really easily. Okay. Now let's look and see how aligned it is. A little bit crooked, see? A little crooked. So it's real, that's why you don't tighten it all the way. There we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, guys. We'll go ahead and tighten that down. Don't over-tighten it. You just want it to stay in place. You don't want to crack it on the end either. However tight you can get it with, like, three fingers. That's all you want to do. There you go. Okay. Savvy? Now, let's grab that uh, speaker cloth and put it on. It is not out of laziness that I did nothing with the speaker cloth. It's because it looks good, and I have learned through many bad experiences that the more you fool with these, the more you mess them up. So you just put them back. With speaker cloth, you either replace it or you leave it completely alone. That really is the best approach. Okay, so um, I want that to sit there while I install this in the cabinet. We know that this basically sits on the front side of this, and these studs go through the holes here. Okay. Now, these studs came out with their nuts, so they're easy to put back in. And the, you notice that the studs have little screw holes on them, or little screw slots on them, which is really handy, because that'll make it easy to make sure they're tight. There's a star washer and a small fender washer on each one. So make sure you put all the hardware back. Don't over tighten them. Two fingers. Two finger tight. Okay. See what I mean by that? Look at my hand. And watch here. Let me show you over here. Two finger tight. That's all you need to do. We're talking about Bakelite. It's durable stuff, but it will crack. And the thing about Bakelite is if you put too much pressure on it, it might not crack today, but over time, that stress will cause it to crack. So Two finger tight, no tighter. You can always tighten it, but you can't fix a crack. So looking at this, it's aligned really quite well. It looks good. Okay, We're, we'll go on and move to the next step. Okay, now comes a moment which I've been kind of nervous about, but we're going to go ahead and do. And that is, we've got to mount the turntable into this chassis, or into this cabinet. So the first step, of course, is to get these little springs down in their wells. If you look back at the video, you remember that the springs sat down in these wells like this. And then the, the record changer sat down on top of it. And then these screws screwed up into the record changer. So Okay, the record player is installed, and I'm getting ready to slip the radio chassis in, and, uh, and then I can go ahead and hook everything up and begin the alignment process, because I think I have to align this thing with the radio chassis installed. In order to mount this chassis, I have to mount this plate right here, so I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted on the chassis. I'm going to see if I can do it with it sitting where it is, because otherwise it's a real pain. There's a quarter inch driver. Let's get these screws out.
there are no trimmer caps underneath so I shouldn't have any trouble with the alignment these I'll be aligning these and I don't see any other trimmer caps and I looked at the alignment it looks like uh, the first and second IF and then and then uh, the oscillator <coughs> and the antenna. The antenna does have a, a capacitor on it, a, ca a variable capacitor. The oscillator, I'm not sure where the oscillator, oh the oscillator of course is up on, ooh it's on the tuning condenser so that might be a pain. Adjusting that might be a bit of a trouble. I might be able to get to it. <coughs> But I'm, I think I'm just going to maximize the uh, IF. I, I don't. All right. The rest of the assembly is sort of mundane. I put this bottom cover on, and then I went ahead and used it to mount the chassis into the radio. And I mounted that loop antenna to the back of the cabinet and I put four rubber feet on the corners. You can see one of the screws for the rubber feet there on the upper right of the cabinet. But really that's all there was to it. It's pretty mundane. So I'm going to finish that up and I'm going to go ahead and show you the finished product. And we'll do a, a final listen with this, a little finale, because the rest of this uh, project is really rather uh, boring and I don't want to put you to sleep. Okay, boys and girls, it's time to show off the Admiral. This is a 1949 Admiral model 6F11-N radio and record player. Let's check it out. Go ahead and turn this thing on. And it does take a minute. It's actually kind of a pretty machine now that it's all finished. It's got a nice look to it. This is the Savior. This is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. I think I'll move on from here. There we go. You know I always go to KSOP. KSOP, Salt Lake Classic Country. Here's the tone control. Alright, let's pull out a record here. There's a source of noise in my basement that causes all that buzzing. It drives me up a wall because I can't find the source. I know some of it comes from my LED lights, but even when I turn those off, I still have it. When I take this machine up to my shop up in the wood shop area, um, it doesn't make that noise and it sounds fantastic. Maybe I'll start filming this kind of thing up there. Turn it on by turning this little switch right here. Let me take the needle guard off of the, the tone arm. Okay. Here we go.
going to reject here now and it does not auto stop it will just go right back to the beginning of the record okay we're going to try another Benny Goodman record it's the talk of the town it's another fox trial let's give this a try oops Okay, from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael, and that's all for now.